If you look at Sprint, we're looking at five factors, what I think five factors that make up most part of the performance. First of all, you have to have the talent. You have to have the talent. If somebody starts out with 15 seconds in 100 meters, the chances that this kid will be an Olympic champion are very slim. There is a genetic component there. In there. And just the last five to 10 years, a lot of uh, work has been done in, in the field of genetics to find out which genes are involved in increasing uh, speed and increasing sprints performances. Culture is important. You can have all the talents in the world, but if your culture isn't about sprinting, then you don't go anywhere. So you see long distance runners, right? Long distance runners from Ethiopia, from Kenya, why? The altitude. Hey, but there's altitude in Colombia, there's altitude in Tibet and Nepal. Why don't you see any runners from there? Well, it has to, something to do with culture. Now in Jamaica, sprinting is the national sport. So over here it may be basketball or baseball or hockey. But in Jamaica it's sprinting. Well, that's important. The temperature has something to do with it. Most sprinters come from warm or hot countries. You don't see many sprinters from Alaska. You don't see many sprinters coming from, uh, well, Finland, cold countries. You need a certain temperature. It's good for your muscles, of course. Or you need adequate indoor facilities. Some, some Scandinavian countries, it's snow most of the time, and ice, and below zero Celsius. So you have to build indoor facilities. Good, you can compensate with that. And training, hey, important too, that, because that's about us. Yeah? And then we have technology. Technology might help us. Have you access to the latest technologies, to the highest uh, level of, of uh, well, equipment? state-of-the-art equipment for training and for uh, evaluation, or not. Are you deprived of all of that? Okay. Specific situation for me and the time I was coaching. Come from a small country, 70 million people living there, in a small country, so the genetic pool is rather small. There's not too many talents there, but just because of sheer numbers. Most of the athletes we have come from Suriname. It's one of our former colonies. That's one of the advantages of being a colonial country, having colonies in the past. So that's where you tap into. We used to rob them in, in, in the past from all their precious goods. That's why Holland became a very rich country in the 17th and 18th century. And um, now we rob them from their athletes. Most of them come from Suriname, yeah, one of our colonies. And of course they uh, came from Africa most of the time. We have a sea climate. We have a sea climate. It's not sunny all year round. We have snow in winter. Uh, sometimes uh, three feet of snow. It's not very well suited for, uh, for sprinting. And we have lots of rain. And not the rain like yesterday for half an hour, raining for days. Not very good if you have no indoor facilities. We have no culture of athletics or sprinting. We have no real role medals. We used to have one, Fanny Blanca's Kuhn, 1948, four gold medals in the Olympics. But who remembers Fanny Blanca's Kuhn? I mean, not the new generation doesn't even know who it is. So it cannot be a role model if you don't know who it is. Then, at the time I was coaching, we didn't have one single indoor facility. So it's cold, it's rainy, so you have to improvise. You will see it later on, how we improvise. We train in shopping centers, shopping malls, just to stay indoors. We train in tunnels. <laughs> Stupid, but we did. Yeah? You have to be creative once in a while. We have no talent scouting system. We have no university system. We have no uh, army or police system that supports after you. We have a club system. We have uh, more than 200 small clubs somewhere from 100 to 300 athletes in total. Most of them are recreational athletes. They have coaches and that's a, that's a system. How do you get to this uh, club? Well, sometimes when we still had physical education in school, your PE teacher would say, hey, you can run fast. You go to a track club. Yeah, that's basically all there was. As a coach, I didn't have any support. I was national coach for five years, but it was more a limitation than that I got facilitated by the by the Federation, no scientific support, no connection with universities or laboratories, no financial support whatsoever, no sponsorships, and no medical support, no sports that I could go to for free at least. So basically I educated myself because I was a one-man band. I had to play all the instruments myself. So yeah, I started to learn about massage, about acupuncture. I started to learn about uh, biochemistry, about biomechanics. And it's great to do that. It's great. Number one, you have a wide spectrum of knowledge that you learned. And um, you become independent. You become independent as well. And you know what's important and what's not. 
and good too. Some people like to overdo it. A dietitian will always overdo the importance of nutrition because that's what they learn, that's what they get paid for, that's what their interest is. A biomechanics expert will always overdo the importance of biomechanics, of course. What else? So if you have to learn anything by force, because you're forced to do this, then you learn the different uh, importance of all those uh, in, uh, fields. All right, basic principles about sprinting. There's limited room for improvement. I talk about 1%. The main important factor is, of course, the quality of the neuromuscular system. That cannot be as a big shocker or as a secret. You know, it's obviously, you have to have the right neuromuscular system, the right nervous system, and the right muscles. Size of the heart doesn't matter much. It does, but to a minor extent. And um, without being a sports psychologist, I pay attention to the mental part, because you can never es escape the mental part in, uh, in training. We all sports psychology, if you want to or not, if you like it or not. Because you talk to a brain, you don't talk, talk to the muscle, you talk, don't talk to the heart, you talk to the brain. And the brain is a process of information. So be aware that every workout is a mental workout. A chance to increase the mental capacity of the athlete or to decrease it if you like to. Yeah. Increase or decrease self-confidence. Here's a sentence that I am most notorious for. It's train as much as necessary, not as much as possible. We coaches are driven by anxiety that we don't do enough. I don't really care if my athletes work out once a week or once a month. If they become a Olympic champion, nobody asks how much they worked out. You don't get medals for having 10 or 20 or 30 workouts a week. It's the one that gets it at the, at the tape first. That's the one that gets the medal, right? Now, in that line of thinking, I saw a lot of my athletes and myself being a, a very mediocre athlete uh, getting injured. I got injured. And then one thing I thought, this isn't helping my performance. I told my Achilles tendon. It wasn't really helping my performance. So if I only make sure that my athletes never get injured, that's already 50% of the job. I'll leave the injuries to my colleagues. Huh? That's not part of, injuries are not part of the game. Like I always say, if they're part of the game, I prefer to be part of your game, not part of my game. Because the injured athlete doesn't perform well. Why not? He isn't even behind the starting blocks. He isn't even running. Huh? He's at the surgery table at the physio, nursing his injuries. <clears throat> what I noticed in an early age is that individual differences are very important. We're not talking to the same person here. You're different from him. We can see it from the outside. We can see it from the inside. If you take biopsies, we look at the mental aspect and we see we're different people. So, so it's not one size fits all. It's tailor-made, custom-made work that you do as a sprint coach if you want to be successful at least. So everybody needs a different program, a different approach as well. And the physical part is in the mental.